cell disease is a hereditary blood disorder that affects about 90,000 Americans. Here to tell us more are Janice Nelson and Amaryllis Franjul. And we have Amory with us as well. Lady, thank you so much for being here. Thank, thank you. you for having us. Um, Janice, let's start with you. Why don't you explain to us a little bit about what the disease is and how it affects people? Okay. Sickle cell disease is a red blood cell disorder. It's a hereditary disease, one of the first that was discovered about 100 years ago. And how it affects people is that it causes the red blood cell, which is normally soft and round, to misshape and become hard and sickle. When this happens, it causes those red blood vessels to um, be blocked, and that causes severe pain. That's the hallmark symptom of sickle cell disease. So it can affect, that blockage can occur anywhere in the body. Uh, now, stereotypically, they say that it's um, mostly African Americans or Latino children that are affected with this, and that's completely not true. The, it, it affects all races, so we tend to think of it as a disease of minorities, but it truly does affect every oh, single really? individual. It's a worldwide disease. Mm -hmm. um, the World Health Organization has called attention to sickle cell disease because it has fallen so low on the priority of health um, disorders, but it truly does affect all races. Um, now, Amaryllis, tell us a little bit, a little bit about your daughter, Amory. So Amory was d diagnosed with sickle cell SS um, when she was born, and pretty much she's four years old now. Pretty much about every three to four months um, since birth, she's had a sickle cell crisis where she's been hospitalized. Um, it has ranged everywhere from having, you know, viruses to having acute chest syndrome, having pneumonia. Um, it all starts with fever, mm -hmm. um, and you know, it's just something that we're dealing with. And how do you? maintain it. I know there's not a cure. What do you right. do? Well, Anne-Marie is on daily meds. Um, she takes penicillin every day um, and she, she's also, she also has other issues where she's asthmatic and she has allergies so she has um, a lot of meds that she's on daily but you know we just watch for her. There are certain signs that we look for. Mm -hmm. Definitely we call the doctor if she has a fever of 101 or higher. Mm -hmm. um, we look for her skin complexion. If she's starting to look pale, we look for um, her hands and her feet if they tend to swell then that's a sign that we definitely have to call in um, and if she complains of any pain herself mm -hmm. um, now it's a little bit easier that she's older because she is able to verbalize when sure. she does have pain um, and when she does get pain the pain management at home is to take um, ibuprofen sure. or Tylenol well she seems to be doing okay it, now I'm she sure is. she's looking forward to she heading is. to school so um, excited Emeralds, was this did you know that it ran in your family I knew mm -hmm. that I had the trait. You did. Um, we did not know that her father had the trait, um, and we found out when she was born. So it's my first experience with sickle cell. I don't know anyone in my family that has it, um, or anyone else that really has the trait, other than the parent that carries the trait that I received it from. But you're learning or as you go, right? I am learning. Um, Jenna, let's, let's talk about the Sickle Cell Disease Association of America. There's a local Southern Connecticut chapter. Yes, there is. It's located here on Whaley Avenue in New Haven. There's also one in the northern end of the state as well, in Hartford, and it's called the Quality Citizens Care for Sickle Cell Disease Association. They're both part of the national organization, which I'm also on that board as well. And I understand there's an upcoming event, a walk there that's is. planned. Tell there's us about that. There's a walkathon that's planned uh, September 21st. It will be in East Rock Park in the College Woods area. Um, so we invite everybody to come out, bring their friends, their families. It's a, a well organized. It'll be the 23rd walk. Oh wow! Okay. Um, lots of children events. Um, it's an opportunity for people who have sickle cell disease to network with other people who have sickle cell disease, which sometimes people find that they're kind of isolated. Mm -hmm. And so when they come out and they network with each other, they find out they're not the only ones who are going through that, and it, it gives them a sense of empowerment and um, a network. Sure. There's also going to be a walk in October for the Hartford area at the Kinney Park area the, at the Pond House. Got it. Um, is there a website or someplace we can find more information or resources? Both of them have um, a website, Sickle Cell Disease Association of Southern Connecticut, okay. and um, so you can just Google it and you will find both of them there. Very good. All right. We'll also have that information up on WTNH.com. Amaryllis, Amory, thank you so much for being here, and Janice, thank you so much for the information. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Stay with us. More Connecticut style after the break. We'll be right back.